I bought a BMW to rent out on Turo. Hi guys, my name's Denver. I'm from Toronto, Canada. As you can see, CN Towers in the background. And this is gonna be episode one of taking you through my Turo uh, experience. So I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube of Turo hosts talking about their cars and everything, but they don't really dive into the details that I wanted to know. So I figured why not, while I go through the experience, share that with you so that you guys can know everything that this costs me and perhaps the money that I make from it. So I'm gonna break down everything from the cost to getting the car, all the maintenance, everything like that the cost of everything extra I do for Turo and then I'm also break down all of the profits that I make from all my rentals so that you guys can have an idea of what it's gonna look like for you if you decide to rent into Turo now this video is gonna be a little bit subjective there's gonna be a lot of Turo information in it a little bit subjective because it is in Toronto Canada this is with a BMW so it's a little bit different maybe you're not looking to do a BMW maybe you're in a different marketplace but at least you can get an idea of what my numbers are and hopefully that can help you guys in the future so in this episode for part one, I'm gonna do this in a, a three-part episode. So episode one, I'm gonna break down why I chose this car, all the costs that I've got to it so far just to get it on the road. And then episode two is gonna be getting it ready for Turo, breakdown of all the expenses for that, everything I cost. I plan on doing some dash cam and some other stuff. And then episode three is gonna be after my first rental, gonna give you a breakdown of what it's cost me so far, what my profit margins are and everything like that. And then I'm gonna to continue to update as I go through to see if this car ends up making money or if this is a total failure, but at least you guys can live through me and experience to know what the cost is gonna be for you. Okay, so let's talk about why I chose the BMW. If you are new to my channel, then you wouldn't know, but I am a client advisor at a local dealership here in Toronto at Parkview BMW. We're all pretty much the number one dealership in all of Canada right now at the time of recording this video. We were almost there last year. We ended up being number two in sales and number one as the M car specialist in whole of Canada. So it's a really good dealership. I'm really happy, but working there comes with a lot of perks. And that is the main reason why I chose a BMW. I mean, the other reason behind that is I've never owned anything else than a BMW. BMW. I've been through quite a different couple E36 uh, 3 Series, an X3, a 2 Series, and now I have this F30 uh, 3 Series as well. So I've never owned anything but BMW, but the main reason is because I work at a BMW dealership and I'm going to get a discount on parts. So throughout the video and throughout all my videos, I will break down what it's costing me and what it would cost a normal person so you can see where my savings are coming. That makes it a little bit more sense. So if you're considering Turo, I would recommend, you know, having some kind of advantage. The advantage for me is I'm kind of mechanically inclined. I'm not a mechanic, but you know, if it comes down to doing oil changes, regular schedule maintenance, replacing bushings, I can basically do everything I need to without tearing apart an engine, which is gonna save me money on paying maintenance and labor. But if there is something where I need to pay for labor, then I can have my work do it and I get an employee discount there, which is benefiting me, which is kind of cutting down my expenses and helps increase my profit margin. If you're a normal person, you kind of have to think about those things. You know, what's gonna be for your cost for maintenance? Are you paying a dealer to do it? Are you doing it yourself? Another aspect of that is gonna be cleaning the car and getting it ready for your next rental. So I have all my cleaning supplies that I need to keep this car clean, sanitized, up to date, and, and provide a really good car for my customer. That's something to consider. If you're gonna be give it, paying for a detail after each rental, you know it's gonna be really cutting out of your profit margin. So you kinda of wanna consider, does Turo work for your lifestyle? What are you doing that can minimize expenses and maximize your profit margin? So as I'm gonna go through, I'll show you guys all the expenses it cost me and all the savings, but I'll get to that at the end of the video. There's a couple of things I wanna talk about, mainly the car, why I chose this car. So I chose a three series because it's a four door sedan. I feel like it's an easy car that everybody's gonna want Want to rent a two-door coupe is kind of subjective to a sporty driver where the three series sedan is somebody who wants to drive a nice car needs space it's more of a communal car but giving them that extra premium that bmw offers compared to just getting a chevy cruise or something like that for not too much more when you're renting it out per day and i was doing a lot of research on turo turo is a really good platform with a lot of information they'll if you do the research they'll tell you what the marketplace is for your marketplace and we are in Canada, as you might be able to hear the geese in the background. Hopefully they can mimic down a little bit and I can continue on. But yeah, Turo provides a lot of great information. So I did a lot of research and I was able to see what was the marketplace in 2019? What was the marketplace in 2020 for the Toronto region? I was also able to see, they also rank what cars are the most profitable. And the BMW 3 Series is one of the top three uh, most um, profitable cars versus the other competitors, which is Audi and Mercedes for that luxury class. So that's why I chose the BMW 3 Series, since one, I needed a BMW for uh, my discounts at work and everything to make it more reasonable, as well as I thought the 3 Series would be a great car. 
Now, another aspect to this is I, it works for my lifestyle. So I am buying this car purely for Turo, but at the same time, if Turo doesn't work out, I will still need a winter car next winter. So I have the whole summer to see, does Turo make me money? Does this car pay for itself? And then if it does, when it comes to October, I'll be getting another BMW for my personal daily driver. For right now in the summertime, I have a 1997 E36 M3 that I will daily drive throughout the summer so that if this car is rented out, it's no big deal. This is kind of like an extra car. That's also something to consider. If you need a a car to get to work and everything like that, then you're gonna need a different car to rent out on Turo because you're not gonna be able to use it while it's rented out and go to work. So those are some things to consider for you. This works out for my lifestyle because I can add this to my fleet of cars, would you say? And then whenever it's not rented out on Turo, I get to enjoy a little bit more of a comfortable car since my 97 M3 is basically a track car. It's all modded, it's really stiff, not really a comfortable car. So if this car is not rented out, I can enjoy driving this and hopefully it pays for itself and we can kind of see how it goes without having a huge loss, without taking a lot of risk. So it's all about minimizing your risk, maximizing the profit margin. So yeah, how I went to secure this car, you would think that I would just get it from my dealership. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to do that. Uh, brand new dealerships, we don't really hold cars this old. It is a 2015 320. Most of our pre-owned inventory is 2017 and newer. We don't really hold in these older cars into our pre-owned inventory. So I kind of went searching elsewhere. I went on to Gijiji and I found the best possible deal I can find. I'm gonna plug in the ad right here. I did take a screenshot to save it for you. So basically this car was listed for $14,990 plus tax. And I really liked it because it had the lowest amount of kilometers. And it's pretty interesting because the guy was willing to send me the car factory right away. So I could see it did have a little bit of front um, quarter panel damage and a little bit of rear bumper damage. That stuff doesn't really phase me. I mean, as long as it's replaced and it looks brand new, that's fine for me. Yes, it will lower the depreciation when I go to resell it, but at the same time, it helped me get a better deal than the other cars that were out there at the time, and that was more important to me. The second most important factor to me was the mileage. So I was trying to get a car with the lowest mileage possible, because when you rent on Turo, they want a car that's a minimum 12 years or maximum 12 years old with a maximum of 200,000 kilometers. So my goal was to get something that was newer than 2011 so that I could at least have that 10 year period and had as minimal kilometers as possible. After doing my research on the BMW, if you are interested in a three series, I found out that this N20 engine that it comes with was really prone to a lot of timing chain failures from 2012, 2014 when they produced. And then in 2015, they fixed that with an update. So the engine's a lot more reliable. So my search criteria now became minimum 2015, lowest price, minimum kilometers. And that's when I found this 320 had 63,472 kilometers on it for the asking price of just under 15,000, which comparing to all the other ones out there, the other ones were asking more money with more kilometers. So this was obviously the best deal. So when the guy sent me the Carfax, I had the VIN number on it. And since I am a client advisor at my dealership, I punched in the VIN number into my system and I was able to see what dealership this was originally sold at from Toronto. And wouldn't you believe it, it was actually from Parkview BMW, which I found pretty cool. I was able to look up who the salesperson was, who the car was originally from. Salesperson's been there for quite a long time. So it was very interesting to see that not only did I find a car that suited my needs, but it's actually from my origin uh, dealership, which was pretty cool. But I found out that I'm gonna be the third owner on this car original customer leased it went through one pre-owned person and then now i have the car it is a pretty basic car it's also able to pull up with the van and see what exactly all the equipment on it is and whether and then i was able to go through my ordering guys back to 2015 to see match it up what all of the packages are so this is the luxury package with the um lighting so it doesn't really have too much not premium essential doesn't have a lot of comfort items but basically you got heated steering wheel you got Dakota leather on the inside and one of the main things for me was a black interior exterior of the car didn't really matter too much as long as the interior is black i feel like black is a really neutral color if you're going for the brown or the beige it might throw some people off when they're renting it but almost every single person is going to be okay with a black interior and it just happened to have the jet black exterior which was completely fine with me this one doesn't have the navigation package, but it does have the infotainment system. So my customers will be able to connect in through Bluetooth, auxiliary, or a USB port for charging and everything like that. So it's still gonna have everything you need in the car. One of the things that it doesn't have that could have given me advantage would have been Apple CarPlay with the navigation could possibly give me advantage. But within the price point I was uh, going for, I figured most people are just using their smartphones anyway. So I didn't really need to bother spending that extra money. So I didn't really worry about that part. Now, another nice feature I, I wish I could have made sure that I had on here would have been front and rear proximity sensors on the vehicle. It would have given me a little bit of peace of mind knowing that when people were backing these into parking spots that you know, it would have helped prevent them from hitting obstacles. But at the same time, 
as a Turo rental, you are responsible for the vehicle. So if it comes back and there's damage, I'm just gonna be putting a claim through Turo, even if it doesn't have the sensors, which is not a big deal. So let's talk a little bit of the purchase experience for me. So I went to this uh, pre-owned dealership. It wasn't a private sale. It was like a used car dealership somewhere down in Oakville. So about 40 minute drive for me. I drove down, they had the car waiting. It was really clean and I appreciated that. It was already detailed on the inside, which was really nice. And I started doing my inspection. So like I said, I'm not a licensed mechanic, but I do have a lot of mechanical background. So I knew what I was looking for. Doesn't put it on the hoist. I couldn't put it on the hoist, so I couldn't really see underneath of it. But only having 60,000 kilometers and being a 2015, I figured there couldn't really be too much underneath of it. And you know, with that and on Vic, they do have requirements to you know be faithful to your customer, not be scamming people. And I knew once I did my safety and everything, I was gonna find out any hidden issues. Now during my inspection, it was pretty good. The car was clean. Uh, the only thing that I noticed was the tires was old. Brakes were all looked like they were brand new, replaced at 60,000, roughly around the time they should be. Nice thick pads all around, which was pretty good. The only thing that I really noticed was the tires. They looked like they were original tires still, very minimal tread, old cracking, and I checked the dates on them and they would have been the original tires for this car. So as we were going through the purchase experience, just so you can know when you're looking for a car, first thing that the guy did, no fault of his own to him, you know, if I was in his position, that's what you gotta do. They're trying to make money. But the first thing he did was add a $2,000 warranty in it and just kind of slide that in. He's like, yep, with the warranty, this is what it'd be. I'm like, well, I don't want the warranty. I've always been somebody to roll the dice on it because I have the discounts with fixing it and stuff. I don't believe in third-party warranties anyway, just because I've heard some horror stories of when you actually go to claim it, they don't wanna pay. They're kind of like health insurance. If they can do anything they can to get out of paying you, they will. And it's always a pain in the butt to get that third-party warranty to pay for like a transmission failure or something. If you are getting like the manufacturer extended warranty from BMW itself, I do recommend those, especially as a client advisor, but I don't believe in any third-party uh, warranty. So I just wanted to roll the dice. So I asked him right away, you know, take the $2,000 warranty off. I don't really need that. Let's focus on the main price of the vehicle. The other thing they were willing to do was the safety package, which was $700 which I thought was a little bit more expensive than what it would cost me to get it done at work, which is usually like one hour of labor to get it done. But the main thing that deterred me from letting them safety the car was the fact that they seemed to be willing to safety it without addressing the tires. When they said, yeah, we'll just add in the safety package here for you. And they didn't address that they would be changing the tires on it for $700. That kind of worried me because the mechanic, yeah, they can just sign off and, you know, safety the car for you and stuff like that. But those tires, I had a feeling were like right on the line of not being passed. A good mechanic would not pass those tires. A shady mechanic would. And that concerned me. So what I told him was, don't give me the safety package. Just license the car. Give me a temp sticker. I'll take it to my work and I'll safety it myself because I don't want to pay you guys to do it when I don't trust you now uh, with the tires. It kind of is a little shady to me. Other than that, my old purchase experience, the guy was really good. Went through all the numbers. Uh, tried to get me at a 5.99 interest rate. Ended up lowering down to 4.99. Perhaps maybe he did have an option to get a lower interest rate like 3.99, but they got to make their money too. Wasn't willing to budge any lower, even you know through negotiations, which is kind of interesting being a client advisor, negotiating with them. But overall, I was able to drop the price down by about 500 bucks. So it ended up being 14,400 plus tax. I don't expect to get thousands of dollars off a pre-owned car. When you go to a dealership and you're buying a used car, like if you think you're gonna get $3,000 off these cars, yeah, you're kind of out to lunch because they don't really have that profit margin in them and they also need to make their money. This guy, why would they sell the car for less than it cost them to get it onto their lot? It was a really good offering and I feel like if I didn't take it, somebody else would. So even though he wasn't willing to take $1,000 off, which I was asking for, he did do $490, which was good enough for me because I knew it was still the best deal out there. So I went ahead and did it. I purchased the car. I think I have some footage of when I was first looking at the car. I'll kind of plug in here. But basically, yeah, so we worked out the finance, worked out everything, the prices and everything. I come to pick up the car, I get the temporary sticker, I drive it back to my work, and then at my work, I replace the tires, and then I get the safety. I got a four-wheel alignment, because I do believe you should check your alignment once a year, and since it's a new car, I always check my alignment on a new car. I've had a bad experience where the rear alignment was out on a vehicle. Brand new tires when I purchased it, six months later, tires were done, because they were wearing unevenly and extremely fast due to a bad alignment. So after that, I learned my lesson, always get an alignment when I get a new car. And the last thing I did was a 55-point inspection from the BMW. BMW offers this really good promotion with a 55-point inspection on your vehicle plus one-year roadside assistance. So with Turo, that's one thing I wanted to make sure that I had was roadside assistance and somebody else will be driving this vehicle, not me. And it's always good to have that with any car you're driving just in case you get a tire failure, blowout, cracked rim, anything could potentially go wrong and you do not want to be paying six to a thousand, $600 to $1,000 to call a tow truck on the spot. 
If I didn't get the BMW tow package, I would recommend the Canadian Tire tow package. That one's really good. It's $100 for the year and you get five tows or unlimited tows as long as you end up at a Canadian Tire store to fix the issue. But with the BMW one and my discount, it cost me like 26 bucks and I got one year roadside assistance. And I think I might be able to use that with my other BMW as well. Who knows, but I've used it in the past and I have really good service with that. When I had my X3, I did the same thing and it was really good. So after I got the car, I put a $500 deposit. I paid $74 for a licensing fee. I took it back and I got the tires, four tires, a safety, a four wheel alignment and the 55 point inspection. I think it came out to around $1,600. But at the end of this video, I will break down the full prices so you know exactly what the numbers are down to every single cent, as well as what it would cost a normal person. And then after that, I took my safety in and I got my two year sticker for my license plate because here in Toronto, we have to get stickers and that cost $220. So my plans for Turo is I would like to scale it up. One of the things that really piqued my interest with Turo that I learned recently was the selfless check-in due to COVID. So before when I rented out a couple years ago on my X3, I had to go to the person, drop the car off, and then when they're ready, I had to pick the car up for them. Uh, that didn't really work with my schedule of what I currently work. So when I found out that they have where the person, you can get a lockbox for your car and the person verifies on the app and then you can give them the passcode for the key, kind of like Airbnb. That really lit a fire up into my uh, butt, under my butt to really try the platform again because that means that say they desire a drop off location of Union Station or Pearson Airport. I can go there the night before, drop the car off with the lockbox, leave it, and when their flight lands, they can just go to the car right away and I don't need to be waiting for them. And then when they're done, they can leave it, key in the lockbox, and I can pick it up. That works in my schedule. So that was the main reason why I decided to really give this a go because it's gonna allow that to be really flexible in my schedule between picking up and dropping off and the fact that I don't actually have to meet the customer in person, which would make it really difficult trying to arrange it with my schedule it really limit you to the times that you can especially if you're working a full-time job and this isn't your full-time job which for most people watching this video and getting interested in this is not gonna be your full-time job it's gonna be a little bit of a side hustle for you so in the future I would like to scale this up so I'd like to if this car pays for itself I'm going to end up scaling it and hopefully get like a smart car convertible some muscle cars hopefully work my way up to some nicer cars that I can enjoy while they're not rented out and they pay for themselves throughout the rest of the month Roughly, I did the math. Um, the math was really important to me. I wanted to see how many days I can rent it out for the kilometer allowance. So it had 64,000 kilometers on it. Let's round that up to 70,000 for some driving. Let's say I rent this car out and I have a maximum of 130,000 kilometers. On Turo, the minimum you can give a customer per day is 300 kilometers, which is gonna end up being that I can rent the car out for 433 days before I hit that $200,000 uh, maximum mark. So I divided by the price of what they're currently listing for and the numbers made sense. So the numbers, if I rented out and my profit 45 to $50 a day, then I'd be making around 17,000, which pays for the whole uh, cost of the vehicle plus interest. And then at the end, I can sell it for another five to 8,000. Not to mention if a customer uses less than 300, then that also means I can rent it for more days and maximize more dollars. So you gotta make sure the car that you're looking at, what's the price of the car, what's the kilometers on it, what's it renting out for, and do the math on whether it makes sense for the car to pay for itself or not. Some cars are just not, are not gonna be worth it. And you gotta find the gems on your used car market where it makes sense. I know a lot of people, maybe uh, one person I watch on YouTube, she leases all of her cars. I don't know if that would really work for my marketplace. So to, I'm gonna start with buying them and then maybe stretching in the future. If I can build up like a $3,000 safety net for this in case to pay for any um, you know months where the rentals are down or whatnot, then I would invest in another car. My next car would probably be a smart car or a convertible or something like that. Okay, so before I hop into all the detailed numbers, I'm just gonna show you guys a little bit about this car. You can see what it looks like on the inside and the outside. I'm take a detailed look up close at this 320. One thing I like about this one is the fact that it actually has the chrome grills, the chrome in the front and the chrome window surround. Even on the new BMWs, they've changed that. And now it's only a satin aluminum color. I do like the luxury packaging with the wheels are really nice. And as you can see, fresh brand new tires on there. And in the winter time, I will be installing winter tires so that my Turo customers can be as safe as possible. I really like the black exterior on this car. All wheel drive system was also very important because we are in Canada. That's gonna be one of the main factors people are looking for to make sure they're safe in the winter time. In the front seat, black interior, which is really nice. Pretty simple interior, but I really like the BMW. You do have, you know, dual climate control system, infotainment system for all of your radios. The black Dakota leather is really comfortable on the inside and the back seats are really clean and comfortable and they can once again adjust the temperature in the back. 
comfortable sunroof. So yeah, overall, I think people are gonna really enjoy this car. I think it's gonna be, you know, uh, something that people enjoy renting, kind of catches their intention, uh, and not real, didn't really realize like they can get into a BMW for only 50 to $60 a day, depending on. So you have the luxury on the door stills. And of course, one of my things is gonna be, you know, you gotta vacuum the car out, you gotta clean the car before everyone. But one of the nicest things is, you know, you got heated steering wheel for the winter time, heated seats, the electronic transmission, your dash controls and everything like that. So, I mean, overall, I think this is gonna be a really good car that people really enjoy renting out. Okay, so let's break down everything that I paid so far. So I put a $500 deposit to secure the car. Upon picking up the car, I paid $74 for my licensing sticker. And then I took it to my work to get the tires done, which was $1,370.01. Vehicle safety was $148.31. Four wheel alignment was $112.43. The 55 point inspection that gives me the one year roadside assistance was $33.88. And then after I got the safety, I went to the ministry and I got the two, uh, two year sticker, which was $220. My total out of cost pocket so far has been $2,458.63. Now I do want to show you guys what it would cost a normal person and what the benefits are. Now this is where this is giving me an advantage where I can kind of maximize some profit margins. So for a normal person, the tires would cost $1,720.90. The safety was $296.63, the alignment was $224.84, and the 55-point inspection normally would have been $67.74, coming to a total of $2,310.14. That means that I saved $645.51 by being an employee at where I work, which is the BMW dealership, Parkview BMW. So that is where I'm utilizing my work to save more money to maximize my profit margins. Maybe. Uh, your situation could be different and you can find a different way to kind of maximize uh, your savings and maximize your profits. So the next thing I want to talk about is the total vehicle cost. So the vehicle ended up costing me 14,400 plus tax, which here in Ontario is 13%. So the total for the vehicle was $16,272. And then I put a deposit of 500, which gets subtracted from that. So the total financed amount was $15,772, which I financed over five years at 4.99%. My main part with this is I wanted to keep my monthly payments lower. So instead of, I did a longer term instead of a shorter term, but the total finance cost at the end if I do go through the whole five years and I don't pay this off early will be $17,944.80 but the goal is that Turo will pay for the vehicle itself plus some and then I'm able to pay the vehicle off early and I won't have to pay the full interest amount since it is an open loan now moving into next, I want to talk about the monthly operating costs. This is the most important. This is why I try to keep my loan payment around $300 a month and ended up being $299.08. And my insurance currently is $309. This is another thing that's going to be subjective to the person. Uh, I have two tickets and that's what's affecting mine. Hopefully over the years, uh, my tickets will drop off. My in long run with the insurance company, my insurance rate will hopefully go down each month and it will reduce my monthly expenses. So if you have a really good driving history and you have really good insurance, that's somewhere where you can utilize the savings and you're not paying out a bunch of money every month into insurance costs. Uh, but basically, my insurance cost for the month is going to be $309.89. Total monthly cost coming to $608.97. So that's my goal. I need to make more than $600 a month in order for this car to pay for itself. So if this car was rented out at $60 per day, Toro is going to take a 70% cut. I'm going to keep 30%. That means I'm going to get a $42 profit. And that means I'd have to rent the car for 14 days a month for this car to pay for itself and not including like if somebody picks for a delivery that's an extra charge or if they take on any charge options that I include like car seats or anything like that that helps me you know make a little bit of extra money that's all the expenses I have for you I hope this helps I'm going to break down all my expenses in episode two of getting the car ready for it uh, the Turo rental and I'm going to break down every time I make a dollar off this I'll show you exactly what the numbers are all right thank you guys so much for watching I really appreciate it I hope you enjoyed this Turo content and you're excited for me in the future of building this uh, if you do want to see episode two make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want to stay on top of all my Turo activity and that way you guys can see hey is this actually a viable side hustle option in Toronto you know what's he making are people renting it out what's it costing him everything like that and as I build more cars to my fleet if this is successful you guys can stay on top of that and maybe get some hints for your own business uh, steal some of my ideas and everything like that. If you have any feedback, just drop it down in the comments below. I really appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you next time for episode two.